Hey everyone, welcome to my video presentation about the reproductive parts in flowering plants. In this video, the learning objective is to identify the reproductive parts in flowering plants. Are you ready? Alright. So to begin with, let us play this game. I know everyone is familiar with this, so you just have to figure out the word that best fits the pictures presented. Okay, so what is your answer? That's correct. So the word is plants. How about this one? Okay, so these are parts of a flower. In your grade 4 class, you have learned about the different kinds, the different habitats, and structures of plants. Now, we will study more about plants, specifically about flowering plants. What is your favorite flower? What is the most attractive part that you see? What do you call this part? Well, generally speaking, these are petals that are the most attractive of all the floral parts purposely to attract insects. The flower is the reproductive organ of a plant that produces the egg and sperm. Let us now examine the floral part and find out the different reproductive parts of a flower through watching this. Let us learn about the male and female reproductive parts. Carpal is the female reproductive part of the flower. The top part of the carpal is called the stigma. Stigma is supported by the style. Base part of the carpal is the ovary. Ovary contains one or more ovules. Each ovule has a female gamete. <laughs> Flowers that contain both male and female reproductive parts are called bisexual flowers. Hibiscus and rose are some examples of bisexual flowers. Flowers that contain either male or female reproductive parts are called unisexual flowers. Papaya and watermelon are some examples of unisexual flowers.
fertilization to take place, pollen grains need to be transferred from the stamen to the stigma. If the transfer of pollen grains takes place in the same flower, then it is called self-pollination. If the transfer of pollen grains takes place from one flower to another, then it is called cross-pollination. This transfer of pollen grains is done by wind, water, insects, or animals. After the pollen grain lands on the stigma, the tube cell produces a pollen tube through the style into the ovule. The male gametes travel along with the tube nucleus through the pollen tube. After they reach the ovule, one of the male gametes fuses with the female gamete, leading to fertilization. Fertilization leads to the formation of zygote. The other male gamete fuses with the polar nuclei to eventually form endosperm. The zygote divides multiple times to form an embryo within the ovule. Sperm provides nourishment to the embryo. Eventually, the ovule develops and turns into a seed. So let's now discuss the reproductive parts of the flower. So let's begin with the stamen. It is the male reproductive organ. It consists of a pollen sac, which is called the anther, and a long supporting filament. The filament holds the anther in position, making the pollen available for dispersal by wind, insects, or birds. The pistil is a plant's female part. It generally is shaped like a bowling pin, and is located in the flower's center. It consists of a stigma, style, and ovary. The stigma is located at the top and is connected by the style to the ovary. The ovary contains eggs, which reside in ovules. If an egg is fertilized, the ovule develops into a seed. Again, the reproductive parts in flowering plants are the following. We have the stamen, the male part, which is consists of the anther and the filament. 
The female part, which is called the pistil, consists of the stigma, the style, and the ovary. And also, the other accessory parts of the flowers are petal, this one, the ovule. We have the receptacle, sepal, and pedicel. Now, class, what do you think is the importance of the reproductive parts of a flower? Alright, so reproductive parts of the flower are responsible for the plant reproduction. It's time for you to get your pen and paper and try to do this activity. Arrange the jumbled words and place them in the column where they belong. So take your time. Okay, check your answers. So again, another activity. Identify the reproductive parts of a flower below. Have you got the correct answer? Okay, so remember class, the essential parts in a flowering plant are its reproductive parts. The male reproductive organ is the stamen. It consists of the anther and the filament. The female part is called distal, which consists of the stigma, style, and ovary. These parts are important in the reproduction of plants. For your offline activity, Draw a flower, label the reproductive parts, and describe each part. Thank you for studying with me. This is Teacher Mary Ann. See you next time!